Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Billy Watson TV. It gives me great pleasure today to introduce an actor and a writer. Um, he's bringing a show to Edinburgh called My Own Private Shakespeare in August, so he's come on to talk about that. Welcome to the show today, Justin Hay. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. That's cool. It's nice to have you here. I'm just trying to think of, I've had an actor on before, can't really think of one, so you're the first actor. Ah. You're, you've, you've not got a British accent there, sounds um, on the other side of the pond. Yeah, that's right. I'm uh, I'm based in Toronto. Toronto. Uh, I'm cool. in I'm in Canada, but so, so. Uh, I started my days in Scotland. I was born in Dundee. Oh, you're born in Dundee, the wasteland. Yeah. <laughs> I went to high school in St Andrews, and I went to university in Glasgow. All right. I was actually going to just ask you to start by introducing yourself and where you kind of grew up. So we've laid into that quite nicely. So you're Scottish. What? what um, when did you leave Scotland, and what was the reason? Uh, very, very young, actually, about the age of two. So I was back and forth in uh, in Canada and, and Scotland through my uh, through my youth. Uh, I had some early days in Regina, which is a very, very cold place out on the prairies in, in Canada. But most of my growing up was in Ottawa, uh, Canada's right. capital city. Okay, so you feel Canadian then more than Scottish, really? I feel more Canadian than Scottish. It's true. Yeah. So which part of your ancestry was Scotland and why Why the back and forth? Uh, my my father, in fact, my, my parents are South African, right. um, but my, my father's family had come from Scotland. His parents were both born in Scotland and he felt very sentimental about Scotland. Right. So much so that he took the family there and I got born and my brother as well. All right. um, and we returned there some years later. Uh, so when I went to high school. So there was a real connection there, and his, yeah. his mother was from Inverness. And so how many years did you spend in high school and university? Uh, so when it was uh, three years of high school. I, I just yeah. need to turn off this ringer. Okay. One second. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm here. Um, high school was was three years. My last three years of high school in St Andrews, and then I had four years at uh, university as well. All right. So you got seven years of Scotland then, and then you got through university and says it's too cold here, but it's actually cold in Canada as well. Yeah. So it wasn't the cold, but it was the rain. Oh the rain, my goodness! Yeah. There was just so much rain in in Glasgow. I was I was thoroughly drenched. Yeah, it seems to be. I, I live in between Edinburgh and Glasgow, near Falkirk, if you can remember that. Yes, indeed. And, um, yeah, it seems to be every time I drive through to Glasgow, not so much Edinburgh, but every time I go through to Glasgow, it just starts to rain. It's just like rainy city. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so, yeah, pe people said that, you know, you, you you could never know what the weather was going to be like, but I think that you knew it was going to rain every day, and so that's <laughs> that's what I went on. Yeah, carry a brolly. So when you went, what did you study in university in St Andrews? That's quite a posh university as well, yeah? <laughs> I, I wasn't at university in St Andrews. I was only in high school there. Um, right. I studied English Lit and Theatre in uh, in Glasgow. All right, okay. So cool subject. So that's what what kind of um, books and that are you interested in? What was the authors you were reading when you were younger that got you passionate about this topic to make you want to take it at university? Hmm. Um, I was loving all the classics. Um, uh, it, I, I love great writing. Uh, you know, people who have what I don't have right now, a real command of the English language and being able to, <laughs> to articulate. Um, you, you write your plays, do you not? What's that? You write your plays? I, yes, yes, indeed, I, I did. You're, you're well, too I had then. some help from, from William Shakespeare as well. About yeah. half of it is taken from Shakespeare's text. Yeah, it's still um, yeah, it's a creative process. You have to be good with words, so you're doing not too bad. Well, I'm I'm getting by. You can't come. But, you can't uh, Conrad, yourself to the case Dickens, you're reading Austin, yeah. I, yeah. uh, Thomas Hardy. The I really, I grew to really, really love uh, their their writing. Cool. So it's not was it common in those days for people to read so much, you know, or these days nobody reads. Um, no, I have two daughters, and and they don't read the same sort of things. They've certainly turned their back on anything written before ten years ago. Oh God, it's even it's unbelievable. My son, with movies, I'm not watching anything that's in, not in mega high D or, or that kind of stuff. You know? Yes, 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. It what always teases me that uh, talk about a movie from the seventies, and they say, "Well, were they talking in those days?" <laughs> exactly. We're prehistoric, mate. We're prehistoric. How old are your daughters? Yeah, I, I think I do feel it sometimes, indeed. How old are your daughters? Eighteen and twenty. All right. Good luck with that then. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the worst years are over. Yeah, my son's just getting to the, almost eighteen as well, and there's a few years there where it's a bit touch and go, but. Hopefully they come out the other side, all right. <laughs> I, I thoroughly enjoy them, and, and every year uh, we get closer in a way. It's 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 a delight to have them. That's cool. It's all about parenting, I think, though. You know um, how children turn out. Basically, a lot of people, you know, you've got a lot. I take of, no people. credit. No, I'm sure you. I'm sure you must. I don't want any blame either. All right. Okay. It works both ways. <laughs> okay, man. So you're studying literature. You went back to Canada. Then what did you do there? Did you just get into that field of? Um... Um, I I was acting in my twenties. Okay. And uh, and then I turned thirty, and the world turned upside down. I I went into into IT. I had actually um, done a production of King Lear when I was twenty nine, and okay. um, we toured it. It was an amazing tour. Actually, we we toured it up into the north of Ontario, way up north to James Bay. It's almost above the tree line. It's it's right. very, very cold up there. And, <laughs> and we went there in February because they asked us to come when it was at its coldest because they said that way the, the school bus can drive across the frozen water and we could visit another school. Oh, right. So wow. <laughs> it, was, it was super, super cold. And the same tour, we went all the way down to Trinidad and Tobago and we, we performed for high schools down there. It was a very rich, wonderful experience, but it was so expensive, it broke me. And I, I needed a job and I got a job in, in IT. I had no background in it, but okay. it, it swallowed me whole. And for the next 17 years, I stayed away from theater. I got completely sucked into that. You and then- that's a, that's a bad thing, you kind of regret that. Ah, well, yes. Because eight years ago, um, a bunch of things happened to me, and it's the subject of my own private Shakespeare, things that were very challenging, and it brought me back into, into theater and back into acting, and I started to do uh, workshops. I was leading workshops in, in Shakespeare, exploring the Shakespeare text, and recognizing that there were resonances with my life um, in ways that surprised me. And then, uh, just last year, the beginning of last year, something kind of triggered me and I, I wrote the, the play. So I was away from theater for a very long time and then only quite recently returned to it. And very recently in a, in a big way where, uh, I wrote my own show, uh, put it on in Toronto. We ran for three weeks last year in October and then decided to take the plunge and, and bring it to Edinburgh. That's cool. But did I not read somewhere that you wrote something else in 2017? Um, I think what you may have seen was that um, I had been working with my partner, uh, Mona Zaidi is, is the director of, of the play. And she had been doing these Shakespeare workshops with me and she's a filmmaker. And she, um, she made a couple of short films. One was an adaptation of Julius Caesar and another Richard III. The Richard III, uh, she won an award um, at the uh, Stratford Shakespeare Film Festival. I uh, won the top prize. So she's very, very uh, accomplished. And I'm, I feel so fortunate that, uh, that she was here to work with me on, on this show. She was instrumental in, in helping me to, to form the, the script. So you worked with her on the ones with the movies. She was making the movies. And were you involved in kind of helping to write that with her or to perform? Not at all. Them? She was entirely responsible for those. But I did perform in both of them. OK, so that developed a good relationship. And that has enabled you to then. It's, it's exactly, amazing. No man yes. is an island, basically, yeah. We always think we're doing everything ourselves, but other people are vital to do anything really it's absolutely right yeah you know i, I just sort of go ahead i was just going to say tell us a little bit about what happened then 
back in those years that made you get back into the the theater what was these events that drew you back yeah. in were you, were you unhappy in it was that kind of doing it for the money job and not satisfying your soul paying the bills and after a while because i think we've all got this thing inside us and we're kind of almost like a blueprint for your soul that you're supposed to do mm. and when you go away from that it can always calls you back in somehow because it's who you are kind of thing did you find it's something like that yeah i think there's there's truth in that i think if i'm really honest with myself that um i'm not unhappy in it and in fact i'm i'm still working in it um yeah. and it is it's been very good for me and I do feel plugged into society in a way that I didn't feel when I was working as an actor full time. Um, there was just so many rest periods in between jobs. Um, and I feel engaged in, in life in, in different ways. Definitely a feeling of using the other side of my brain. That, that's, that, that's for sure. Um, but ultimately, I, I recognize that I, I need both aspects. And... Yeah and do miss uh, and appreciate the artistic side very much. And if I could, I would be doing it full time. That, that's for sure. I would, would be a full time theater professional, actor, writer, director. Um, th this is where my heart is. Unfortunately, these days, it seems the arts are becoming pushed more and more to the side and it's harder. First of all, people don't have as much money to support the arts. So artists themselves are struggling to actually do their art and it's not deemed as valuable as it probably should be. To me, it should be held up in high regard with, you know, people should take it artists more seriously or give, especially the struggling ones, you know, some kind of basis to do their art and make a living because they're not trying to be super rich. They're just trying to get by. And even yeah, that's I completely agree. And, and I think a guaranteed income is, is one way to go that would be really useful. I, I could certainly have done with that. Yeah, when I was working. Yeah, there's, there, you know, I, when you start talking about guaranteed in, incomes, you start getting into the government and, you know, when you start doing that, how much control they have over you when you when you get your guaranteed income. Income, They probably won't like you being artistic on certain things and okay on others, you know, which is not true art. Art, to me, should be ready to attack any... But that's why I think the guaranteed income is so important is that it should it should be freed up, it should be unstigmatized. It, we shouldn't be giving it to you know, directly to the poor, but rather make sure that everyone, everyone uh, gets this so that it really opens up uh, the floodgates to whatever anyone wants to do and to follow their passions. That's uh, true. I will make a happier world. People are not following their passions and they're further unhappy. So they drink or whatever to mask that kind of emptiness in their life, you know? Yes. So what what would you mind? Do you want to talk about what kind of happened at this point? You were 15 years in IT and uh, life caught up with you. <laughs> well, I, I, it'll be a spoiler for for the show. Ah, but right, no, okay. <laughs> but, but I, no, I will mention that. Um, so it's the end of a marriage. It's the death of a family member, and it's facing an illness, and so all three things combined at one time in a very short space of time. And it's not like they were sort of over with in a couple of weeks. It was, it was a long, long process um, of years actually that, that it kind of stretched over. And what was, what was so remarkable to me is that I reached out to theater at that time and at the very worst of it, at, at the times that were really most challenging and most personally difficult, I was doing these workshops. Right. We were looking at King Lear or Macbeth or Hamlet. And I was I was thinking, oh, you know, this, this is interesting. This is, weird, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going through this right now. Or it resonated in some strange way. You think of any and, particular Obviously, they're in the plague, and you think of any particular ones, you can give an example, a couple of lines here or there that struck you. Yeah, sure. So the kind of linkages were um, <laughs> uh, the kind of linkages were Hamlet loses his father. I lost right. my father. And so Hamlet speaks to the, the ghost of his father, and suddenly it's not a ghost scene. It's meeting your father. 
right. and all of the emotion that goes with that. Right. And and then who is he and what is their relationship? And is he seeking <laughs> approval from his father now? And why isn't his father paying attention to him? You know, why is it all about him and and what he's going through? I mean, I realize he was he was murdered, but he's got he's got no time for him. It's not like he's he's not there for him. He's yeah. not, are you okay, son? You know, go on without me. He's he's completely wrapped up in himself. And these so you find that was similar. Are, they, they meant a lot. And you find that was similar to your kind of relationship with your father. I yes, mean, indeed. Uh, so that's yeah. basically must have been quite, yeah, as you say, weird, kind of almost like if you're acting these parts out and it takes it to another level, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it's like method yeah. acting on, on steroids. <laughs> I, I feel it. And I feel like what what's happening for me anyway is that the art is reflecting my life. And so I'm understanding myself through these beautiful, beautiful words. And at the same time, I'm taking my life and understanding these works in a different way. Yeah. So this you know, is what the plays developed into. What's that? This is what the plays became then. You, you're kind of reflecting on your life. This is what it's about, yes. my own type of Shakespeare. Yes, and change the way I see the plays. Even though I'd known them for years, now I'm seeing them in, in new ways. I'll give you so another kind example. Of helping to reveal different aspects of Shakespeare, perhaps. Yes. That people here's, may know. Here's a good example of the, the Macbeths. So frequently, it's played that the two of them are deeply in love. And that when Macbeth returns from, from fighting and he's seen the the three witches and so forth, that they have a very passionate moment where they come back together. I've seen it time and time again. And there I was going through a rough patch with my, with my wife. And I thought, well, what if they're not getting along? And there are all kinds of little clues in the text that maybe they aren't. She's kind of harsh and she's yeah. sort of picks on him a bit. And uh, okay, well, let's play it that way. Let's imagine that they're not getting along. What is what does that do? Yeah, How does that so change? Rather than the that standard that. interpretation, you're just kind of giving that wee twist on it. Yes. Yeah. So with this, with this lady, she's quite well versed in Shakespeare as well. Was that did you help to write it together? Did you go away and sit? What was her involvement in the? And how did the kind of yeah. the, the idea um, blossom? It dramaturgy is what she brought, and. So every word is mine and every word is my life. Uh, but what Mona brought was, so when I, I, I kind of wrote it in one go okay. and uh, kind of sat down and vroom, there it came. Right. And there was no immediacy to it. It was, it was like a, a Ted talk. It was, this is my life. And here's right. how it reflects on these scenes from Shakespeare. And she said, it needs to be more immediate. And with this trigger of the immediacy, with this cue, um, the whole play becomes a kind of time travel. Uh, we go from episode to episode and we're always in the present. And so now it's this moment and now it's that moment. We are here and this is what's happening. And it changed things completely. And I, again, I sat down and rewrote, but it was, it was almost in, in one sitting. But it was her ear and this notion of of what works effectively in in the terms of the the dramaturgy of it all. Uh, had you ever written a play before? You know, because no. you know there, there are three firsts for me here. Um, I, I've never done a solo show before. Okay. Uh, I've done many many plays, but I've I never was on my own on stage before. I've never uh, performed my own writing. And I've written some short films and that sort of thing, but nothing of this kind of scale. And I've never written about my own life. Right. So those those three things are, they're pretty scary. And sort of <laughs> weird, I'm on a ledge. Yeah, would you like us to show a wee clip from the show at this point? Sure, that would be great. So basically the screen will come up. We'll just sit in the background and let this play. Um, I think this is a clip, so we'll show this folks and back in a, about a minute and a half, a short clip. I need to put headphones on.
so there's not any echo. Here we go. As my trust erodes, I continue to lack proof. Othello's situation was different, but the sentiment, the sentiment was the same. Consumed by Iago's insinuations about his wife Desdemona's infidelity, Othello confronts Iago. By heaven I know thy thoughts. You cannot, if my heart were in your hands, nor shall not, whilst is in my custody. Oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. That cuckold lives in bliss, who, certain of his fate, loves not his wronger, but oh, what damned minutes tells he o'er, who dotes, yet doubts, suspects, yet strongly loves. Cool, great stuff. So there was a little bit of an echo there. I don't know if it was because you got your speakers on, but I think it was understandable. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, hold on. Still got my headphones on. I, I hasten to, to add that uh, there are no clones involved in this stage production. That's a little that's bit some... of film magic there, but there's yeah, no some... smoke and mirrors when uh, it's just me on the stage. Yeah, was that lady, I thought that when you were doing that, that may have been part of the thing you were doing before with the lady. Was she involved in that little clip? What was her name? So she, well, it was her, it was her ability with film that, that allows that bit of magic to occur. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like a small promo you done. That, was, that wasn't during an actual live show. Yeah. So it was a filmed uh, version of, of the show and, and so right. she played around and, and had every time that I talked to myself, she splits the, she splits me up and, um, Okay, so you've got, she, she did the full show like that. You've got a full copy yes. of that. Oh, yeah, that's pretty did. nice. Yeah. Cool. So you've actually been performing the show and you turn it around a little bit in Canada. Uh, not touring it around, but we ran for three weeks in October, mm -hmm. which was um, pretty magical. And, you know, I, I knew that I, I really wanted to come back from, from COVID, and, you know, when it ended and be on stage. And so that, that was part of the intent. And as it turned out, there was this window of opportunity of October where the theaters opened up just enough to allow us to go in. There was very little going on in the city at, at that time. And audiences were quite rightly uh, you know, anxious. So we had small audiences, but um, it was it was beautiful and uh, intimate and wonderful space. and. And it, so it, have you been planning on touring this in Edinburgh or was this just the first thing, let's try this for three weeks? Were you working all, obviously during the, the time? It wasn't the intent go, going into it, but coming out of it, we soon after said, hey, what about what about taking this to the Edinburgh Fringe? Okay, so that's, you've done the three weeks there and was it well received? What was, was there any reviews of it or what people yeah, there, we we did get reviewed. It was very, very positive and, uh, and the audience really enjoyed it. You know, but part of the feedback was that um, th there were people who love Shakespeare and, and they definitely were, were brought to it. Um, but there were quite a number of people who struggled with Shakespeare, who hadn't really seen it before. And either it was clearer to them as it's presented here in short pieces with some context provided. Um, but also, and it's it kind of baked into the show is that you don't need to have an understanding of Shakespeare to to get what's going on here and to to get the sense of the emotion. It's a very very emotional piece. There's there's lots that there's lots going on on that on that stage as we reflect on these things that are are happening. Um, and people were were moved, I believe. I, I, I hope some, so. There's some quite would you say dark elements in it, or you know. Yeah, we, we even put a warning. There's, there's certainly yeah. there's discussion of suicide and and uh, and dark thoughts. That that's for sure. But it's it's not without a bit of humor. And uh, 
there are a few laughs along the way. Well, that's all aspects of life, isn't it? You know, you need the humor. We have to kind of laugh at the, you know, to get through the, the dark, you know? Yes. Yes. But it's important we go into the dark, you know, and, and look at that and shine a light in it instead of just covering it up and not talking about these things. And that's what, again, art does. Yes. I hope so. Uh, so what was the process like in rehearsing it? And so when, hmm. when you got the script, did you, when you said you had that dump the second time, did you go back and talk to the lady and kind of fine tune it? And then it was a case of you going away to a room and rehearsing, or did you get a, a, some help in the actual putting it together? Yeah, Mona directed the the play, so I I did do it with her for for sure. Um, uh, the act of memorization was was quite hard, and I, I recognized there was you know a lot of work to to be done. Um, it was it was hard. It was. It was quite a long process and uh, sort of longer than, than I've had with rehearsals. You know, professionally, one does two or three weeks of, of rehearsal. Um, and, and then sort of unprofessionally, one, one can go through months, but you do very sporadically. This was quite a full-on effort to make sure that I was cramming the stuff into my head, that I was sitting with it, and that I really had a, a full sense of it. Emotionally, <laughs> it, was, it was hard. It was really hard. And if you're still going into that time period to when you were, you know, back in eight years ago when this was, these kind of things yes. were chatting you. I'm, I'm you're working time with it all the time. myself. <laughs> yes, it's true. So, and, and it had to get to the point where, okay, I've got to work through these emotions and make, and make them happen. And then it like becomes overwhelmingly emotional. And then it goes past that and, oh, is there anything left? You know, is it all dead now? It's just memory work. And then it was, oh, okay. It's all, it's all there. And it's, it's deeply inside and it's a performance of emotion, but it's, it's very well grounded. Uh, and that's how it feels now. My poor mother came to see the show and she was very concerned that, uh, that I was swept away by, by the emotions of this thing. Like, she's seen what you went through this, back then yes that, that she well saw the stuff about my father and and certainly right. you know there's many she like did she touch by it was she yes. found that hard to watch yes in fact i i think it's uh, she took it away with her in a way and and carried it with her for for some weeks as it made her reflect on things yeah. that's cool it's powerful i, I think so yeah. it's my you know, intent <laughs> um yeah so just you performed that back in october have you been performing it since is it still in your head you know i i'm i i left it alone uh completely for a, a good few months um but i've been working it since we haven't performed it for people again we're kind of putting it back together again um i want to be sort of primed and ready for august are you going to be doing any previews in Canada and stuff before you come back? Any warm up? I don't believe so. All right, we're straight into the deep end. Running. So where are you? How are you performing in Edinburgh? Who got in touch? Are you at a, a, a theater there or? We're at the Willow it? Studio, right? Greenside Space. It's very central. We're just near St Giles Cathedral. And is it a ticketed, ticketed uh, event, or is it? There's new. There's got free festival. This is ticketed, yeah? It's ticketed, yes. And the, the tickets are available through the edfringe.com website. Yes, you're in the official Ed, Ed Fringe program. Yes. Yeah, it costs a yes, fair bit of money to come to Edinburgh, yeah? It is costing quite quite a bit. Thank goodness for the IT job. Yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah, as I said, it's hard just to do what you want to do as an artist. And it was even, you know, you were touring the show before you said that the first show when you are 29 and it made you bankrupt. You should be working, you should be earning money, you know, putting money aside, but actually it's making you skin. <laughs> but that's what following your passion does. There's not much reward in it sometimes unless you sign a big deal with somebody, you know. So what are you what are you hoping if you from Edinburgh, what what do you think is gonna happen? Are you excited about it? Or, you know That's that that's a really good question. Um it's enough in itself. I'm, I'm so thrilled to be able to take this month and be an actor for, for myself. 
I'm very excited to share this with the audience. I, I think there's something special here, and I, I look, I look forward to, to being in that space and sharing with people for an hour. Um, and really, that's, it's such a special experience that that I'm. It is enough in in itself. I'm. It's not a stepping stone that I'm. I'm looking for. Yeah, a lot of people go to Edinburgh. I mean, I've done it uh, six or seven times myself. And the oh, first yeah. time you think, you know, here we go, and then you hit the bitter reality. I mean, your show might be different, but I'm on the, I was on the outskirts, you know. It's hard to get an audience. There's so many shows, and you're doing it comedy to, like, two people, you know, and, and they speak Spanish and German. You're like, oh, for fuck's sake, you know. <laughs> so, I do hope that there is an audience in there. Yeah. Well, in the type of venue you're in, if it's a popular venue, people know it's got a certain quality, I think, because I don't think you, you can just get in there. D did you get vetted in any way? Or, you know, they just trust that it's a good show. They don't really care these venues. They're just getting the money. To I, I sent I, I, I sent them there at the show, so they, okay. they could have seen it. Um, but I, I believe that this is this is pay and play kind of thing. This is uh, somebody can just uh, can pay their way in. Yeah. Well, again, if it's in a popular venue and the other shows around that are good, that kind of helps raise the esteem and people get tickets. As long as the show goes ahead, with again, with theatre, you can get a bit away with it. One or two in the audience doesn't make a great deal of difference. If you're trying to do comedy and you're looking for that reaction, it's yes. a nightmare, you know? Yes. But, yeah. I've, I've been any... there myself. I did the improv comedy with an audience of two. All right. Did you More of us on stage than they were in the audience. <laughs> that's brutal um, have you done much comedy is that part of how did you get involved in improv it is part of my past I, I was in Montreal for a year I worked with a group called Theatre Schmieder we did uh, weekly improv shows right. and uh, I was at the uh, Comedy Cavern in, uh, in Glasgow I doubt that it's still a thing but 30 years ago um, there was sort of regular improv comedy we did there as well and did a little bit of stand up can you remember anyone from those days who might have been performing? Uh, I no, no, because there's a it's few people I know who were that seems like the early days of Scottish comedy, and I know a few of the folk. I just wondered if you'd remembered Stu Who would be one of them. Bill, Bill, somebody. Anyway, you probably can't remember. Long days. Someone parent I seem to remember. Yeah, that's right. That's one I parrot. He was just known as Parrot, I think. Okay. Yeah. I never met him, but I heard about him. Bill Dewar was the other guy who was back in the early days. He's Sorry, still we're going. talking over 30 years ago now. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, just um, so your comedy is a tough gig. <laughs> but again, doing Shakespeare, again, fucking hell. It's a, it's a tough sell as well. But is there much still people interested in Shakespeare? Do you find there's still, you know, this. Again, older people from that generation study at school are probably dying, and young people these days are not. I sense Shakespeare. that there still is an interest. We actually had some young people. They were about twenty-year-old engineers that came okay. to see the show, out of on a whim. I think because there was so little playing, and they thought, "What are we going to do?" Right. Okay. Oh, <laughs> see this thing. They were really, really touched, and. Uh, and asked, uh, where can we see more theater like this? All right, cool. Couldn't ask again, for a better uh, yeah, again, response. The way you're doing it, I think, by presenting it and almost explaining it, is a, probably a good way for people to, to Gives people an get introduction, yeah. Introdu yeah, introduced to it. So have you got your venue in it? Uh, no, your venue, your accommodation set up. You're just coming by yourself. Is it a month by yourself? Actually, I'm coming with my daughter, and she is going to be running the lights and sound in the show. All right. I'm thrilled about that. Uh, she hasn't been to Scotland before, so... Uh, All right. Are you, are you just sites. coming for the festival period, or you got to be window either side? You can travel around? It's a full month of the festival, and I'm, a, I'm afraid we don't have any other time, so... We're, we're going to be there. Um, I think we'll get up to five yeah. on, uh, on our hours off. Yeah, it's not too fast. See some okay. friends. Take, take a look. Some old friends up there. Yeah. Yeah, see what it's like. I, nothing much will have changed, probably. 
<laughs> I know it. I was there a few years ago. It's pretty much identical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love. I got brought up in South Queens Ferry, which is where the big railway bridge is. Can you, do you know that? Yeah. Just going over the the bridge on on the Edinburgh side. Great. Cool. So is and, there and Mona else? will be there as well. My director will be there too. All right. Make is sure I. Going, is she going for something else or just for you? You know, she's here. She's going to be there for me, but uh, I'm sure that both of us, all of us, will be uh, checking out lots of shows. I'm so excited to see everything that's going on at the festival. Yeah, so what I mean, she's coming with you. She's not involved in another project. She's helping no, you. No, that's project. right. Not another project, no. Okay, so that'll be cool. Um, yeah, there's tons of stuff on, and you can go and see lots of stuff for free as well. The free festival, you know, some are hit and miss stuff. But, yeah, you should have a great time. I don't know. Um, let's talk about Canada. What's Canada been like the past couple of years? Ah, <laughs> well, uh, you know, theatrically, it's been extremely quiet. Everything got shut down. I think that makes it very hard. And for my friends uh, working in in theater, it's it's been difficult. But the the film and TV industry has been extremely strong, and and that's continued on. Um, it shut down very briefly, and Toronto is a major center for, for film and TV. Are you involved in that at all? Um, to some small extent. All right. What's your involvement with that? Well, I'm a member of ACTRA, but uh, I, as I say, I'm, I'm working full time, and so it, uh, it doesn't leave a, a lot of extra room. So you would like to get a small part in some playing uh, TV show and get more developed and... I'd, I'd like to get a large part in a, in a television right. show. And, uh, the uh, addition and some of these things. Yeah, when, whenever I can, yeah. And I've, but I've been doing some small projects over the last few years, and um, uh, I just try to keep my hand in. Cool. So after Edinburgh, what's your plans then? Do you have any idea what you're going to do with the show? Or do you think I'll kind of sit in the back burner again for a while? Well, as I say, I, I don't view it as a, so much as a stepping stone, but if, if, I, if I had my druthers, um, I have started to think that maybe we could take it other places, go to Australia, go to New York, go to California, um, other places I think people would appreciate this, a show of this nature. Yeah, well, if you don't have a big you know, crew and cast or whatever to take with you, it does make that's it a right. lot easier to organize these things. Yeah. Cool. So that's great. I think we've done a good job. Let me like to tell people of, again, just where the show is and how they can get tickets. And then um, we'll maybe see another. Are you going to get anyone to film your show? Well, we have that film version already. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll have another go with Mona there. Maybe she'll get restless and pick up a camera again. I think it would be nice to, to have um, a version of it with an audience. It would be great. Yeah, well, if she doesn't want to do it, I've got a, a trusty little portable thing here. I can point it at if you're needing that. Great, thank you. It'd be nice to come along and chat to you in person. That'd be terrific. I hope to see you there. So the, the show's on what time? At the Wh Willow Studio at 10 p.m. each night. We're not on Sundays, but every other day of the festival we'll, we'll be performing. It's good to get that day's break, by the way. I tend not to do it, but actually just psychologically, just to know you're going to have that day off. Even if, you know, some days you might turn up and not get an audience, you'll still be stressing with over that time. But just a one day off mental break and start again. So good idea. That, that, makes, that, that makes sense. Yeah, I think I will need it. I definitely do. Yeah. Well, um, and thing, the tickets are at edfringe.com. You can you can uh, get the tickets Ed there. What's the name of the theater? We've got a web, another website. What's, there was a theater production company. Oh, modernclassictheater.com. We'll yeah. give you more information about the show as well. And we'll link directly to the uh, edfringe.com site as well. Yep. And have you got tons of flyers and posters made? We don't yet. That's the thing. It's, I don't know. To me, it's spend a lot of money on that. And I don't know how effective it is, you know? Is that right? You put posters everywhere. And you, there's so many people in the Royal Mile. They're all handing flyers. And people are just getting flyers. And they just go and chuck them in the bin. The best way is to kind of have one or two and really talk to somebody. Not what, have a small amount and really try and talk to somebody, make a connection and give that fire to that person rather than just dish them out all over the place. That makes sense, yeah. 
you know, if you can what, what about social media these days? I mean, we're on, we're on Twitter yeah. and Facebook. I think if you actually, this here's what I've done during one festival. I was going up the Royal Mile and I was kind of talking to other acts. Say, do, tell me about your show. And I was making small clips of them. But that was getting me known and the act. So even if you're at the Royal Mile with your phone and just say, here I am today, do a daily update just of you on the street, maybe talking to someone interesting two or three minutes or maybe put a montage of your pictures together for that day. And every day, just say, here's my festival of the day. I think it's worth, you know, a useful thing. And people gets like, people who are not in Edinburgh, they see um, what's going on. It's like their wee window into the Edinburgh Festival. So if you up there a mile and just say, here's a strange character, you know, just five minutes of like the people, you know, there's lots of different jugglers and all that kind of stuff and musicians and right. all the people in statues, just to give them a flavour. Yes. You know, then people will stay updated for the month and they'll kind of go on your journey with you. And at the end of it, you'll have a wee thing you put together and look back. So That's I don't think you might do it. You know? yeah. Just five minutes of the Royal Mile. Um, you <sighs> let people have a window. The I'm so looking forward to this. I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah, it's a brilliant time. You know, the past couple of years is, I don't even, it was on two years ago, but it wasn't as big last year. No, they had it, but... Right. Compared to before, it was pandemonium. I don't know if it's ever get ever get back to how it was because travel seems to be a lot less in people's money. But it will still be a good time. You'll still have a great time, and hopefully, it's a bit more popular and busy than it was last year. You know, things get a bit back back to how they used to be. I certainly hope so. So I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks very much for your time, and everyone can go and check that out. Edfringe.com is it? Yeah. That's and right. It is um, my own private Shakespeare. That's it. Thanks for watching, folks. Thanks, Justin. Nice talking to you and have a nice day. Cheers. Thanks very much.